Do not fly to Taipei if you're not ready to see these awesome places in Taipei. Yay! Woo! Welcome back to my channel. Hello. It's been forever and the channel has now been new and improved. So for the past four months, we have been traveling all through East Asia. We visited Taiwan, Korea, and Japan. And we were in Taiwan for two whole months, so we have a lot of places to share with you. Yes. Also, for bonus points, he's actually Taiwanese. Yeah, born and raised in Taiwan. So if you want to learn about Taiwan, follow us. Local Taiwanese guide. So while we're showing you these awesome places in Taipei, just make sure you have Google Maps pulled out so you can save all the locations that we're going to talk about. Also, while you're at it. If you like to support us, please subscribe to the channel and follow us on our social medias. The links are below if you want to look at our Instagram, TikTok, and other social media. Also, please make sure to like the video and that will help us and encourage us to keep making more content about Taiwan because we really want to share with you some tips and places to visit. Without further ado, we want to show you guys things to do in Taipei. Let's start out and talk about the night markets in Taiwan. In general, people travel to Taiwan to go see night markets. All right, so why night markets? Because you might ask. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> like no one asks. Look, he's even he's like dying and he still wants to give you these places. Growing up in Taiwan, families like to take the kids or you know their spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend to night markets because it's usually a market where you can shop. I can eat a lot of great food and I mostly very cheap stuff so it won't break your bank. So we went to a lot of different night markets all throughout Taiwan but in Taipei specifically we only went to two different night markets. Okay this is gonna be a test of if I can say it or not. <laughs> Ling Jiang Yes. Ling Jiang Yes. So we went with our friend um, to visit this night market because he said there are two stalls in the night market that have a Michelin guide recommendation. I don't know why I said that so spaced out. And the first one that we ate at was really, really good. It was this place that sells Tong Yun. I said it in Cantonese, but you could say it in Mandarin. Tong Yun, rice ball. The rice balls are normally served with a very like warm, soupy thing. But in this specific case, it was very cool because it was served with shaved ice which is very different like that. I've never seen anything like it and it was so, so tasty. They boiled their rice balls fresh, freshly made rice ball. So it's like piping hot when it comes out. This way it creates like a cold and hot sensation as you're eating. And then there's, they also provide some sugar syrup on the side and lemon syrup. So you can either choose, uh, <laughs> you can either choose, choose you want. One you want yeah, if you yeah. want your shape ice to be a little bit more sweet or a little bit more sour. And then right beside our little rice bowl place, there's another Michelin guy restaurant or like a food stall. It's called Ruo Ji Xiao Chao. Ooh. Sounds very fierce. And they had a famous dish for serving conch. So kind of like this like sea snail thing. They basically take out the meat from the shelves and then stir fry it with some vegetables. Ooh, yum. Yum. <laughs> yum. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> no, it's quite the same. <laughs> we also visited another night market called Ling. Night market. Siling, yes, si. This one, a lot of tourists go there just to visit. I think it's one of the recommended night markets out there. At that night market, we had um, frog eggs, which are not actually frog eggs. We had a tourist come up to us and ask us, like, are those real frog eggs? But no, do not fret. Yes. They are uh, just tapioca. The drink is kind of like sourish, mm -hmm. sweet, and it's like refreshing when you're eating a lot of stuff. We also tried this like dessert, forget what it was called. So the dessert that we tried, and it's very famous in Taiwan, it's called Bin Chi Ling Lun Bing. Basically they have a flour crepe and then inside the crepe they put scoops of ice cream and you can choose different flavors of ice cream. And then they grind a fresh uh, peanut, also fresh cut cilantro. Yeah, I forgot what it was called, but it tasted really Really yeah. cool. Like it tasted way better than I thought it would taste. It actually works, right? Mm -hmm. It's good. Uh, Li This, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to visit the ones we did, but just make sure to visit a night market if you head to Taipei. Here is a list of all the different night markets in Taipei. We'll just put it on the screen. So another thing to try in Taipei for sure is bubble tea. Obviously, Taiwanese people are the creators of bubble tea, so you have to try it. I do want to warn you that if you try bubble tea at a night market, it might not be the best idea. I had a few drinks at some night markets and I ended up with a stomach ache because I'm not used to the unfiltered water there. So make sure if you want to get bubble tea, go get it from like an actual store. There's like so many brands like Coco, Yokshop, Chatai, <laughs> Wusula, Come by. 
So there are quite a few different shopping areas. There's endless places to buy things in Taipei, but the one we recommend is Ximanding. And we think it's a really good area for shopping and nightlife. So it's kind of like a good like daytime into nighttime um, place to visit. I remember growing up, uh, most young people would spend a lot of time in Ximanding. There's a lot of like street performers, shops. There's like stalls. You can also buy some kind of like night market stuff there as well. There's like a lot of like tourist souvenirs and stuff so if you want to buy souvenirs for some of your friends that's a really good place to do that they also have like photo booths everywhere so kind of like Korea how you can take those like little photo booth pictures you can do that also in Ximanding it's a very lively place with a lot of shops and everything and it's open from 11 a.m. until 10 p.m. ish like the stores close at different times on their own so while we were in that area we also went to uh, a movie theater we didn't watch a movie but we went there because there's an arcade and a baseball batting cage we're going to an arcade and go batting You'll find a lot of times in Taiwan, there are a lot of arcades and like baseball batting cages everywhere. It's pretty popular to go there with friends. You can do it! Keep going! You win! You won! <laughs> Correct! You will find like a shopping mall. Usually you can go in and then there's usually like a floor just for arcade. As she said, you can play baseball, you can throw baseball, you can have arcade basketball arcade machines or any kinds of things you can find, they have it. In the Ximanding area, it's also an LGBTQ plus area. Like there's a lot of bars that have pride flags and that welcome LGBTQ plus people. We didn't go to any of those bars unfortunately, but we did see a lot of like all you can drink at those bars, which is something that's also common in Taiwan. All you can drink, all you can eat. We did end up going to a bar. We went to this cool like secret hidden bar that his cousin took us and it's like dressed up as a movie theater. But then you like press a button and then a secret door opens and suddenly you're in a super cool bar. Yeah. Chic. A lot of cool drinks that you never think of. Yeah, I drank from like a blood bag. Huh? What? Okay, that, it like sounds kind of weird, but it was it's good. She <laughs> it was, drank from a blood yeah, bag. Yeah, it was like a it was like a blood bag type drink. I don't know. Okay, now I'm kind of sounding weird, but yeah, and then it was like cool in the moment. And everything. All right, next up we got the Xin Yi District. Uh, basically a really high-end shopping mall or district right beside Taipei 101. If you don't know what Taipei 101 is, it's basically... <coughs> oh, that's a still bad. choking yeah, for still your choking. for your benefit. If you don't know what Taipei 101 is, it was the world's tallest building for a period of time. And I guess now it's like not, not the, the tallest. tallest, maybe like the fifth or something. Yeah, fun fact. There's 101 layers, I mean floors. Floors? What are the layers of the cake? <laughs> Taipei 101 is actually a cake. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> is, it, is it cake? Is it cake? I know we said it's like a high-end area, but you should definitely check it out for its like architecture. It's actually pretty big, like you can, there's like three blocks worth of walking distance. Looks very nice there. There's also like more affordable places as well. Like we did an all-you-can-eat there and it was kind of $30 per person for hot pot, which is not doesn't break the bank. Oh, one of the biggest things that attracted us there, the reason why we actually went that day is because there's an Ichiraku ramen. So if you are an anime fan or if you like Naruto, you would know that he always eats that Ichiraku ramen. And they have an Ichiraku ramen theme shop there in the mall in Shinyi. So if you are an anime fan, you should definitely, definitely, definitely check it out. I felt so cool just sitting there and eating the ramen. I don't know, I just felt like I was in Naruto. We were ninjas. We were ninja, yeah. We were eating it the ninja way. We were eating it the shinobi way. <laughs> also, Shinyi has a lot of nightlife there, so most of the clubs are in that area. There's a lot of bars as well. I think we literally just walked into this one building and then we're like, whoa, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, it was like bumping in there. And we're like, what's that? And we rode the elevator all the way to the top. <laughs> what is this? Oh, night fever. Wait, night club. Oh, it's a club. And we realized that it was like a 24 hour club. And we're like, oh, okay, not our scene. So then we left. <laughs> but it was like really cool to see that there was like clubs open almost all day. And lastly, if you are going there for business or you're going there to get some nicer high end gifts, I was just getting some high end tea. We visited a shop called Yushi Tea, and it's actually owned by one of my friends I went to high school with. His name is Daniel.
The lovely owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he puts a lot of effort into crafting up his teas and creating a whole experience for you. So if you are looking for some high-end tea, I would recommend checking out his shop in B1. B1. And tell them you know me. Say Kaylee sent you and see what Daniel says. Don't know what he's gonna say. It could be, it's really a... Up in the air. So another thing in Taiwan that is very very popular is temples. Temples, meow, si meow, si meow. Temple. Oh my god, I thought you were just saying like meow. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, in Taiwan, there are a lot of temples everywhere you go. You could just be driving or on transit and you'll see like a lot of little shrines or little places to worship and big temples, you'll see them everywhere. People are always in and out. So the temple that really stood out to me that we visited was the Zuling San Guan Yin Si Yeah, so this temple really stood out to me because of its like extravagance. It was so large and there was so much to do around there. Like there was like a little river pond Water of body, water of body, water of bodies. Body. There were water of bodies there. I really had an outer body experience, clearly. <laughs> outer space. It's a very beautiful location is what I'm trying to say. It is further out in New Taipei and not as easy to get there, but Uber is quite affordable if you don't mind traveling Uber over there. Uber or bus, oh, line, bus. line taxi, yeah. If you're yeah. not Buddhist and you don't want to worship in the temple, that's totally fine. Like you can definitely just go there and visit and not go inside the temple, but you can admire the architecture from outside. Yeah, or walk along the bridges and the park. It's just a very nice greenery and very good energy around. The next thing I want to talk about is the Yun San Yun San Station. Yun San Zan. It is one of the stations on the Taipei Red Metro Line. MRT. Which stands for? Don't know. Metro R T. <laughs> Ting. Oh, <dang. laughs> So, what was I going to say about the oh. Yes, why we suggested because Taiwan in 2010 they hosted a floral expedition. <laughs> a flower expo, jeez, why do you say it like that? <laughs> floral expedition. <laughs> it kind of sounds like you're going on a trip, like a floral expedition. They have this building where it's made out of 1.5 million recycled water bottles because they want to show you that, you know. Water bottles can be recycled, can be reused, and they upcycle. They yeah. upcycle it into a building. Yeah, they, That's like the biggest glow up ever. But yeah, you should check it out. There's a lot of things to do on the weekends. Is uh, uh, what is it a called? farmers market? Yeah, but every weekend is farmers market. Yeah, so when we went there, there was also like a craft market. We weren't sure if that was like a pop up or not, or if that's actually what they do every single week. But the farmers market is for sure every week. That's what the online told us. Also in in the area there's like a lot of like little shops and restaurants as well and a park so you don't have to really go there for the farmers market if you're not really buying any produce or any artisan crafts or anything but you can definitely just go there and enjoy the nature look at the recycled water bottles and just hang around the area so the last place on our list to suggest to you is Beito Beito. Beito. So Beito is famous for its own hot spring. It's quite a long walk up to the witch's hot spring. It was apparently blessed by a witch. So it is believed that once the witch has blessed the water, the hot spring, everything heals from the water because the witch is the protector of the water. Yeah, and also it looked unreal. Like, yeah. It just looks kind of magical there. And it was definitely very peaceful. Like, the energy there is very, very healing. Like, I felt so, I was like, wow, I feel so calm here. Like, there was like a free hand bath. So you can kind of feel like what the water feels like on your hands. Yeah, and if you get more time to spend there, you should maybe stay at a nice hotel where you can have a private hot spring. Experience. Oh, yeah, I wish we could we could have done that, but we are also poor, so we did not do that. So those are all the suggestions that we have for you for Taipei. If you have any questions, please leave it in our comments. We'll definitely help you out if you have questions about traveling or transportation, anything to do with Taiwan. We have a local Taiwanese person here that can definitely help you out. So if you're planning to travel to Taiwan uh, and you have questions, please just ask us. We're we're here to help. <laughs> Write it down below. <laughs> Write it down below. Write it down. What he said. We have more videos coming up. About about different places in Taiwan and more suggestions about places you should visit. So please stay tuned and uh, continue following our journey. Also make sure to subscribe once again and like this video if you want to help boost our content. That would really, 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 really help us a lot. And thank you so much for watching. Xie We'll catch you in the next video. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. Bye, bye.